May we have the confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. May we all greet one another. You are the disciple of Christ. With that, the title for today is Disciple Timothy. Over the past two weeks, as you have seen in the news, the 2023-26 World Remnant Conference was held with the theme, the leader of Watchmen for the Leaders Retreat and the 25th hour Remnant Bartizan for the main conference. And on Friday night, we were concluding WRC and we had the Remnant Night and held it at Teco Exco. There were over 30,000 people who have gathered. And I went, and there were so many Yewon church nursery kids. It's not just nursery kids, but from nursery kids, preschoolers, and so on. Hearing this message and being within this spiritual stream, what would happen to them? There were more than a thousand remnants who participated this day. And as you've seen in the news, the Vanuatu president had attended. No matter what nation it may be, upon a conference, there is never a president to attend. And it's the first time that had happened in Korean history. Why is Vanuatu so important? We have established a preschool. An elementary school, but it's that in Ushan there was a person who attended university and there was an accident she had seized. So, with the insurance money, it's that the schools were established with her name. And they also helped in the medical fields. It's not just that, but every time they came, the government officials and so on would come. But they're all not healthy. And in Kushin Medical Center, they would come and heal them. And there was one person who was not in the state of being on the airplane, but he had come and received treatment. So like so, the president and all the people were very thankful. So as the president had come, there were a lot of bodyguards and security. And right now, in Busan, there is the Federal Trade. And it's that America is one vote, and Vanuatu is one vote, too. So Korea was asking Vanuatu to make the vote. And out of the islands there, including Samoa, Vanuatu is very strong. So there are many political leaders there as well. We did not even know of that, but the country is very interested. Where Pastor Yu is receiving favors. So, no matter what it is, preaching the gospel, seeing this field to our children, since we are young, we must be able to plant the gospel, to not live a dark life, but from the start, living like Samuel, living as historical figures is what is important. 
So what is the reason that we hold the WRC? It's for the posterity. It is to prepare vessels to be used as the key figures, the summits upon this age where the gospel is disappearing. For children, we cannot do much, even if you nag them. There are instances where they would receive scars. So what do you have to do? You have to pray. How should you pray for your children? How should you pray? May you pray so that they would be used as the main figures for evangelizing 5,000 people groups into 237 nations. The prayer for the children never falls to the ground. What is the core platform? What prayer is it? The core platform of this effort is the covenant of God's word, which is why WRC is centered around the message. It's nothing else. By firmly establishing our remnants as the summit of the 2425 and eternity, what is the partisan? It is that God is our partisan. It is where they shine the light so everyone can see the watchtower. Then the boats will see and they will set their direction upon that. You must be the partisan. As God is your partisan in your field, in your family, in your workplace, in your region, wherever you go, you must be the partisan where people will look at you and be able to find the answer and direction. Peter Trucker, who is known as the father of management, once said, the most dangerous thing in times of turbulence is not the turbulence itself, but to act with yesterday's logic. Our fixed ideas that we cannot throw away is a greater problem. Our current era can indeed be called as an era of turbulence, where everything is changing so rapidly. There's so much rapid change in science as well. In such times of rapid change and transformation, it is impossible to survive using the paradigms of the past. You must change to be anew. Then you will not be able to live with the paradigm of the past because you cannot live with that. As you age, and even if you are old, if you change your paradigm, you will not fall back upon this age. What does it mean to be old? It means that you cannot come out of your fixed ideas then you cannot grow. You'll fall back and not follow the world. So in this age, in Christianity, if you look in the history, Christianity always was in the forefront, always having a new paradigm. That was the role of the church. It always gave what was new. The church had said that we need church hospitals and education. The church established it. The missionaries had raised that sports all the tailoring. We have learned that. So at the church, there were various social and cultural activities that served, including education and sports as well. During the Japanese occupation, Christianity established schools and had active leaders for independence fulfilling its mission as the last stronghold of the nation. 
Even during the Korean War and industrialization process, the church continuously supplied new cultures, becoming a leader in change and innovation. However, how is it now? Regrettably, the church is losing the, to the non-believers and even to the three organizations. They're being pushed by the non-believers and the three organizations completely. The politicians have hold of the cultures. It isn't even being overshadowed by various other religious groups. To put it more realistically, it is being trampled like tasteless salt in the world. In such time, we need to become strong warriors of Christ and break up this situation completely. We have to turn it around as Christians. This is the spiritually strong soldiers. What is the core of that? There are seven remnants in the Bible. Like the seven remnants. Our remnants are like that right now. We have to tell them you are the eighth remnant. It's okay even if you can't study. It's okay even if you're weak or ugly. Don't look at your current situation. Upon the remnants that hold on to the covenant God will use. What were the seven remnants? They were slaves, captives. That was their identity. They were in that state, but they did not fall into that state, being within their identity of slaves, walking around in eggshells, trembling in fear. They did not do that. They did not fall into the circumstance. On the contrary, they transformed the scene, testified to God's living history, and exalted His name throughout the world. Upon such a situation, when our future generations, the remnants, rise and become watchmen of light, saving nations, that is when it will end. So what must we do? The remnants must do 393. What can we do? We are like the king, the image of God. God is with us. God will give us strength. God will give us the thronely blessing, thronely power. We must be able to do the work of God with the power of God. It's not that we write good essays or theses or ha know a lot of words. Why do people fail? Why is it so vague? It's that people don't have the only power. It's because they cannot confirm this mission. Amen? So the upper room praises are all messages. They're not just songs. May it be imprinted in your heart. When God gives you strength, although I am weak, powerless, He will make me great and strong. The ones who fail will be successful, and the poor will be rich. God used a shepherd to be a king. Was there a test? Was there something that they did? All that had happened is that they were in the hands of God, and that was the end of it. You can see that even 2,000 years ago, Paul had the spiritual spirit. Remnant Timothy was established as an absolute disciple of Christ. And Paul had such a great affection that he called Timothy the son of faith. In addition to the epistles of Timothy, Paul's love, expectation, and prayers for Timothy were found in the epistles of Corinthians, Philippians, Thessalonians, and Philemon. And Timothy played a key role in Paul's ministry. 
through the words of the scripture. I bless you in the name of the Lord to challenge the covenant of establishing our remnants as the main figures of the gospel movement as the times like Timothy. Number one, the importance of relaying the covenant. Acts 16, verse 1. Today's scripture shows Paul starting his second mission's journey. However, the situation and the environment were very different from the first trip. There was a dispute between Barnabas and Paul and due to Mark, and eventually the two separated. Barnabas went to the island of Cyprus with Mark, and Paul followed Silica along the island route to Derby and Lystra, which he visited during the first missions trip. This was to strengthen the faith of the saints who heard the gospel. It was part of nurturing ministry that strengthened the watchtower that was built in the field. The first target was Timothy. Timothy accepted the gospel during Paul's first missions trip. And at the time, Paul performed a miracle that raised the lame in Lystra and to walk again. At this time, the people of the region called Barnabas and Paul, Zeus and Her Hermes, and try to offer sacrifices to the two. It's astonishing. When Paul and Barnabas tear their clothes, saying, what are you doing? We did not perform those actions and proclaim the exact gospel. Their gaze was made so that they could face the living God, not people, idols, or a phenomena that appeared in front of them. In this time schedule, Timothy received the gospel. However, Timothy had to leave Paul without any time to receive spiritual nurturing. Why? The Jewish antagonists from Antioch and Lycanum appeared to force the crowd to stone Paul. So people thought that Paul was dead and abandoned him outside the castle. But fortunately, he was not dead, but had fainted. Then Paul woke up and went back with a bloody body and stayed overnight and left the next day. He went back to that castle. I think the reason that he left the very next day was to team up with Timothy even for one moment, to give him team ministry, even if it may be for one day. That heart is different. The ones who wants to raise a disciple is different. So that's why Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. But there are so many believers of the church, but the believers of the church, they just come back and forth. If they don't want to come, they don't come. Those are not disciples. They are just churchgoers, believers. But the disciples, they risk their lives. Even if the teacher does wrong, they understand and go with the teacher, pray, and co-work. That is the disciple. But within the Korean churches, the world churches, there are no disciples. If there are no senior pastors, it will all crumble down. You must be the disciple of Christ, looking onto Christ, being trained with the word. One Bible scholar said, Paul was there when Stephen was stoned to death, and Timothy was probably there when Paul was stoned to death in Lystra. Because Paul was in the forefront wanting to kill Stephen. 
It means that just as seeing Stephen's martyrdom and how it had a profound impact on Paul, seeing Paul be stoned and dragged out of the city would have been traumatizing and challenging for Timothy. Paul also mentions in 2 Timothy 3.11, my persecutions and sufferings that happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, which persecutions I endured, yet from all of them, the Lord rescued me. To Timothy, you saw it all. You were within that field. This confirms that Timothy was to as well. The reason Paul sought out Timothy at the beginning of his second mission journey was to make sure that he delivered the covenant to him and make him a co-worker in the gospel. In fact, Timothy was a perfect remnant for the mission. His mother was a Jew and his father was Greek. In today's expression, he was a TCK. Third, cultural kids. This means someone who has experienced more than one cultural background while growing up. They know more than two languages, Greek and Hebrew. Knowing multiple languages and cultures makes them an important resource for missions as they are imprinted, rooted, and natured with the gospel. Why is it that missionaries cannot bear great fruit? It's that they are not able to speak that language. What does that mean? It means that they cannot understand that culture because culture and languages, it's the same thing. Their thoughts, their ideologies, it's different. The people in Latin America, when you went to Mexico, Pastor Kim Tseun said he cannot understand them. He had given them money to buy bikes because they did not have cars. But the pastor did not give that money. He said he cannot understand how that can be. But he read the book and it was so. For us, we cannot understand it, but that culture, that language, that ideology, it's one thing. So the first generation missionaries are all doors. Being able to speak their language, it means that you're part of that culture. Verse 2 of the text expresses Timothy as he was well spoken by the brothers of Lystra and Iconium. Two things are important in our walk of faith. Along with being approved by God, we also need to be praised by those around us. Those are the people of the Spirit. Being acknowledged by people and God. In fact, there are two sides of the same coin. This is because being approved by God includes being a good influence on those around us. If someone cannot be approved by people, being approved by God is illogical. Everyone says bad things about that person, says that he does not like him, but God likes that person? It's questionable. God is not that type of God. During the walk of faith, I see that. Those who are acknowledged by God are acknowledged by all people. It's the same side of a coin. Look at the people around you. If you are acknowledged by people, then you're doing a good job. Oh, that person. He buys a lot of food, but he always speaks of pessimistic things. That is not a compliment. Isn't that so? 
No matter how much we preach the gospel with our lips, we do not project the fragrance of. If we do not project the fragrance of Christ in our lives, works will not happen. That's why, when we voted for elders, they must get more than two thirds of votes. In most cases, they would not write that name. People would say, oh, that person is not worthy. Let's say there are 5,000 people. 2,000 people must vote them. For those people, they are raised as elders. But you being raised as the age of church officers, you don't know. That's why we did not vote, so come to your senses. It's a start starting from right now, in front of God and in front of man, being acknowledged, uh, being complimented. It was Timothy's education of the covenant that enabled him to live a life of praise and spiritual influence. Even if you say the gospel with your lips, if you are not of the gospel nature, you cannot be so. Having the team of three, you must have the heart of wanting to love the souls. Oh, I really know that that person really loves souls. When they see that person, they want to pray. I want to evangelize and have devotion. I really feel that. Amen. So what was the background of Timothy being able to do this? It's that Timothy's mother was not just a mother, but he was a mother who was a believer. In 2 Timothy 1.5, there is a scene where Paul speaks about how much Timothy received a covenantal education. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure it dwells in you as well. The attainment of the covenant was surely made. It was the covenantal education, relaying the covenant. There is no mention of the father here. Even if he was Greek, if the mother was a Jew, it was the end of it. The mother is important. Not in all situations, but the mother is important. It's a hundred percent. So my mother, she said that she got married because they were believers of God. But when she got married, she found out that he had some lung problems. But he wanted to survive because he had that problem in his family. So he ate what was very healthy. But it was my mother who has given spiritual influence. And she never would yield for the things that was not spiritual, not paying offering or not praying, it was unimaginable. How can you con God with offering?
Oh, we should not feel the offering, the spiritual influence. May you pray. When you look in the Bible, you can see that there were tear marks. It's relaying the covenant. It's not saying, oh, we did this or that. Is it that you're relaying the covenant? Second Timothy 3, 14-17. In essence, it means that when God's word, the covenant, is properly imprinted, rooted, and natured, they gain the ability to do God's good works. Who does not want to live a good life? But it's difficult. So that's why we are engaged in the remnant movement of establishing a strong partisan of Christ, and we faithfully discover and deliver the covenant. Features Alvin Telfer mentions the concept, useless knowledge. In his book, Revolutionary Wealth, he suggests that all knowledge has a limited lifespan and transforms from being once useful and meaningful knowledge into useless knowledge. And it disappears. These are very important words and knowledge, but later as time passes, it is worthless. The world knowledge is like that. This applies to the worldly knowledge as well, which becomes completely useless over time. However, God's word is different. Isaiah 48 reads, The grass withers, the flowers fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Living a life firmly grounded in God's unchanging word, that becomes a strong bar to sin this difficult. May it be fulfilled to all those who believe at this time. I bless all believers of you in church, especially all the remnants, in the name of the Lord, to live such a life and stand confidently as the summit of the 237 healing. Because those who have the word are different. If that is the partisan, it's different. For many people, even if they go to church for decades, it's a lie. It's all a fake. They are filled with the knowledge, wisdom, news of the world. They can speak of it like they are spitting out foam, but they cannot speak of what is spiritual, and that means that they don't have the partisan of the word. May you pray to have the partisan of prayer. May you pray. It does not happen according to how you want. Upon all believers, remnants, may you be able to live this life of a different level, being the summits of the 237 healing. Number two, the life that prioritizes the gospel. Acts 16.3. Apostle Paul makes Timothy, takes Timothy with him to the next missions field to train him to be a disciple. However, one unique thing that he does is circumcising Timothy first. The author of Acts, Luke, explains that this was done because of the Jews in that region. Circumcision was linked to the salvation of the Jews at that time. In Acts 15, an important doctrinal 
dispute is mentioned. In verse 1 it says, But some men came down from Judah and were teaching the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to this custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. These were former Pharisees who had embraced the gospel. However, they had not fully let go of their legalistic thinking, and even more, they imposed it onto the Gentile believers who had not received circumcision. So there was great controversy over whether circumcision was a condition of salvation or not. At the time, representatives from Antioch Church, including Paul and Barnabas, went to Jerusalem and testified that they preached the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, and the Holy Spirit was poured upon them, and they received salvation. They have seen that the Gentiles had received salvation even if they did not receive circumcision. This proved that the idea of salvation being dependent on circumcision was a false doctrine. Therefore, they concluded that salvation is obtained through Jesus Christ alone, not through works or the law. Hence, they urged not to impose circumcision to the Gentile believers. However, Paul, who was concluded in this, acted in a different way to Timothy, ongoing circumcision. Why was this? It is that Paul had thought about the Jews in that era, area that did not yet know of the gospel. Simply put, he was thinking about those with weak faith. He greatly wanted them to receive the gospel as well. When looking at Paul's letters, it is the continuing spiritual stream. It was the same when there was conflict of giving the sacrifice to the idol at the Corinth church. They gave the cow, the oxen, but the businessman had sold that. And it was cheap. So people who were poor had ate that because it was poor. But there were rebukes saying, how can you eat that? It is not important that it was eaten or not, but that by eating it, those with weak faith would fall into trials. So he said, don't eat it. That is why he told them not to eat it. Because that person cannot understand, just don't eat it. You can have a glass of beer, but for those with weak faith, don't do it. When there is a new believer, I saw a report. They went to a gathering. They were eating, and they had a glass of beer. And they were shocked and fell into trials, and they thought that if they went to church, they would not see that because he came to church because he didn't want to have any affliction with alcohol. Thinking about those who have a weak faith. So Paul always prioritized his decisions and actions upon what would be beneficial of the gospel. 1 Corinthians 9.19 reads, For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant of to all, that I might win more of them. Paul was a Jew to a Jew, and to those under the law, he said that he was under the law. He said that those to those who are weak, he will be weak. It was for one reason. Even if they can do it. For those who cannot do it, he said that he cannot. It is to give them salvation. That was the focus. We have to give salvation to that person. Paul did everything for the gospel. He had given Timothy circumcision to preach the gospel to the Jews. 
Paul had the mindset of always prioritizing the gospel. This is what was imprinted into Timothy. Would he have not thought about that every time he went to the bathroom? Timothy knew everything. But he knew that, oh, my teacher did this because of this. For the beneficial of the gospel, knowing how he lived, confirming that. There's a saying that children learn from the parents' back. This does not just go for parents. What we do greatly influences the remnants. I bless you in the name of the Lord that all you and church believers live the life of prioritizing the gospel. The children will be the gospel elites and the spiritual summit, cultural summit, and skill summit of the siege. Whoever it may be giving the answer to those who shake giving the answer. The summit, the partisan. May you pray and nurture so that it may be so. This is the conclusion. Timothy had gone to the second mission's journey with Paul for the gospelization of Macedonia and Paul's, by Paul's order, served for the gospelization. Upon his ministry in Thessalonica, After he joined Paul for the gospel movement, and after Paul's third mission s journey, he went back to Jerusalem. After, Paul wrote his last letter when he was in the Roman prison. This was when Timothy was doing his pastoral ministry in Ephesus Church. Even after Paul's martyrdom, he was in Ephesus as a director and was martyred under the persecution of Emperor Domitian. Like the meaning of this name, Timothy, he had lived a life of glorifying God. Disciple Timothy, may we confess together, adding our names, disciple so-and-so. I bless you in the name of the Lord that may all believers be the absolute disciples of Christ to save the two, three, seven nations and 5,000 people groups upon the journey of missions, leaving behind the monumental footsteps as the evidence. Let us pray. Dear Father God, upon all believers of Yohan Church, may they not be the Christians, churchgoers, but be the disciples of Christ. May they not be centered upon the world, the cultural things, and myself. but be the absolute disciples of Christ, relaying the covenant, knowing the importance of the gospel. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen.